čim jih lahko začnemo. Najprej bom prebral eno obvestilo, se pravi, vljudno vas prosimo, da vklopite mobilne telefone in druge naprave, ki jo dajajo. Ki jo dajajo. Drug drugemu omogočimo na Twitter volu nepozaben dogodek. Hvala. Na zadnje, ko so se v kino Šiška zbrali sledilci, se to ni posebej dobro končalo. Folk ni bil posebej happy, happy. Pa še policija je imela delo z njimi. So, dear followers, or I'd rather say subscribers to Nine, Nine Quarterly, thank you for coming to Kino Šiška and paying attention. Sometimes you, can, you simply can't say Nine, can you? Our guest today is a former professor of German literature, a philosopher and a failed academic, Dr. Eric Jarosinski. Welcome. Thank you very much. Ah, I have a microphone. You have one on your own. <laughs> I think I have a microphone. I'll leave you with your microphone and that then we speak. Good. Uh, I think maybe I should stand a little bit. I can't see the people in the back, so... Uh, whoops, uh, sorry, I'm a little unsteady my feet still this morning. Um, well, thank you all for coming. I didn't think that anyone would come on a Thursday uh, at 11, um, but evidently the unemployment rate here must be higher than in <laughs> Croatia. Uh, it's the only explanation that I have. Uh, but uh, after some of you maybe even taken time off from work to come, I hate to disappoint you at the beginning, but there is a misunderstanding or two that I should probably clear up. Um, I think some of you came expecting to see that Twitter got. Uh, I'm afraid that Twitter got uh, was not able to make it. He is uh, still in Moscow, unfortunately. Uh, I do hope that he'll be able to make it sometime soon. Uh, also, it was clear to me um, that there was a bit of a misunderstanding about um, what uh, Nine Quarterly is. Um, <laughs> that, that's right, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a philosopher, actually, is the... Uh, <laughs> but I was... The other thing that, I, that I'd like to say um, is that this is my first time uh, in Slovenia. I'm afraid it will also be my last time here. Uh, it's hard to make a living uh, as a Twitter aphorist. Um, uh, just got too hard to pay the bills. Luckily, uh, a certain German company is in need of a new spokesperson and thought that I could somehow improve their image. So uh, I'll be dedicating myself to that uh, for now on. Um, but I would want to thank very much uh, everyone for spreading the word about th my visit on such short notice. Um, I should warn you that uh, your town is about to be flooded by failed intellectuals from all over the world. Uh, so uh, I, would, I would be prepared for that. But I want to thank you uh, in particular. It's nice when you come into town and you see uh, 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 posters uh, welcoming you, spreading the word. Um, but here, like many places, uh, there was some degree of protest, uh, I noticed, <laughs> as well. Uh, but in general, I know people were very uh, excited, and uh, some of you uh, even perhaps somewhat uh, too excited uh, uh, to, to see me. I'm sorry, that's embarrassing. I shouldn't have shown that. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, uh, Dunya. Uh, but, I, but I'm coming now from... Uh, Croatia, uh, also my first time there. Uh, my memories of a lot of this part of the world uh, having come of age in the uh, late 80s and early 90s, of course, had to do with uh, uh, war, had to do with uh, 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 refugees in various places. Um, I was studying in the Netherlands in the mid-90s, uh, took language classes, was learning Dutch uh, together with many people who were coming from um, uh, Bosnia or coming from... Uh, uh, Serbia as well, uh, also Croatia in my class, so it was an uh, interesting time uh, to, to uh, uh, experience that. Um, and so there certainly are some, some difficult memories. Of course, I can be proud of what uh, the United States did uh, to help out uh, at that time. Uh, some of you will remember uh, Operation Vowel Storm, uh, if, you read the, if you read The Onion. Um, Luckily now, uh, things of course uh, much much better. I did, however, get some very bad news uh, upon arriving in Croatia. Um, now I know that there is uh, uh, some degree of misunderstanding. I was told uh, between uh, Croatia and Slovenia. Um, uh, I was told that uh, sometimes uh, Croatians are thought to be somehow less cultured. Um, uh, 
I've, I did not spend long in Zagreb, but I can tell you I was very impressed by the architecture. Uh, uh, also, uh, really a terrific uh, art museum uh, there in the front. Um, and I have to say I was very pleased by uh, 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 the uh, place they gave me to stay. I think that they pay close attention, <laughs> close attention to, to what it is that I do, so I was happy to see that. Um, as many of you know, uh, they've been busy uh, celebrating an election uh, in Croatia. And it's interesting how elections work. You vote in Croatia, you celebrate, and then you decide uh, who won. Uh, a process that's taking place a lot, primarily on television, I noticed. Um, but I, <laughs> but I've been learning. I've been learning all I can, and I did ask um, a little bit for some information about Slovenia uh, uh, from my my hosts yesterday. So I know a little bit about you. Uh, I was told to say hello to Giannis. Uh, I don't know what that means. Um, uh, I was also uh, told uh, something very important about uh, the uh, Slovenian military. Uh, and what I find most funny about this email is the subject line, uh, awesome Slovenian joke. <laughs> uh, but in any case, I did some research and I found they're right. Uh, they are in fact green, uh, this being... <laughs> But I'm also not entirely new to, to Slovenian culture, believe it or not. Um, visiting here is slightly traumatic for me, in a way. Uh, I grew up in the Cold War, and I was uh, sent to a uh, re-education uh, facility as a young man in the United States. That's right, uh, this was a Slovenian Catholic <laughs> church and school that I attended uh, for uh, some five or six years. And uh, if I were to really take revenge upon you now, I would make you listen to the song sung in Slovenian at the end of every Mass uh, for those many years. I still have that, that, that in my head. Um, but I was happy, at least I did a little bit of research, and I found that, um, uh, uh, in fact, uh, something better has come of this community where I haven't lived for some time, that they've trans, that this, that this has now become uh, uh, an interesting work of art, I found, uh, uh, as, as, as I observed and learned a little something about uh, uh, what it is that's happened to, to my old uh, hometown. I know the Catholic Church has been important in Slovenia, uh, and I have to say, although, uh, as I learned from Wikipedia, uh, a largely secularized country. I'd like to thank you for that. Um, but at the same time, make it clear that I myself uh, owe a great deal to my Slovenian Catholic upbringing uh, for those years. I think it shaped very much who it is that I've become uh, today, uh, especially around the holidays. Uh, I, I think about the many traditions, and I try to keep those traditions alive the best I can. Uh, and certainly, I try to keep all that I learned at St. Cyril Methodius School uh, in my work uh, today as well, um, no matter if I'm talking about philosophy uh, or uh, religion uh, itself. But certainly, it brings back a lot of fond uh, memories uh, as a child. Um, so for that... <laughs> So for that, I'd like to, like to thank you, even though I've really come to my, my peace, I think, a bit with, uh, with religion. Uh, it has, I think, influenced in some ways the way in which I write today, uh, the way in which uh, I tweet. Um, I think some of that has, has translated into this. Oh, excuse me? Uh, sorry, that's not one of mine. Um, <laughs> Probably one of the best tweets ever written, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so, what it is that I'm interested in doing today is not, not only talking about the Pope, uh, and not only talking about his uh, interesting use of social media, uh, or his interesting critique of, of society, all of which, which has been inherited uh, uh, in my own Catholic <laughs> education, um, this is actually still a sensitive subject in, in, in Germany. Germany was very much used to uh, an older uh, uh, position uh, of, of, of prominence uh, in Rome. I think they have, however, come to peace somewhat uh, with uh, uh, a change in, in leadership. 
As for me, though, uh, I know very little about uh, Slovenian society today. Uh, I did my best uh, to learn uh, as much as I can about, um, about how things work here. Uh, and I learned primarily, uh, I, I want to thank my, my uh, moderator's work on radio, colleagues uh, for Slovenia International, who's taught me many things in the last few days, uh, perhaps most importantly, Slovenia's unluckiest animal. Uh, does anyone know Slovenia's unluckiest animal? No? All right. It is, uh, in fact, the blind cave beetle, uh, which, yes, is named after Adolf Hitler. Um, true story. I have it from, from Radio Slovenia International. Um, it must be true. Um, but I'm looking forward to, to uh, uh, experiencing something of the local culture here in Ljubljana as well. I was promised... Uh, I was promised some uh, burek uh, uh, and, and, and broth. However, uh, when I did a little research, I found that actually um, the uh, roasted potatoes uh, are probably uh, more significant. But what I found of, of, of most interest is that there is, in fact, a society for the recognition of roasted potatoes. <laughs> and uh, I would like to thank its representatives who have come, come today. Uh, of course, I also um, know, as, as everyone does, uh, 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 many parts of the world uh, thinks of Slovenia. Of course, they think of, of uh, music. Uh, certainly uh, made some headlines in the United States and elsewhere uh, this year. Uh, 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 interesting new American tour. Um, uh, also interesting to see... I know, obviously, there's, there's a bit of uh, controversy around the incorporation of fascist uh, aesthetics, um, uh, but I understand it's a more complicated uh, uh, issue than it's often made out to be. Um, but it was interesting, I noticed on the way over today, uh, they're setting up for another concert, it looks like, uh, on, on, on the border. Um, so I'm sure everyone's excited uh, about that. Uh, uh, but but I, uh, interesting, also Slovenia uh, uh, media has been has been very uh, important to me over the last few days um, when I learned that the technical obstacles or temporary obstacles uh, that I had been reading about in the other media, uh, 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 I learned actually are part of a fence. Uh, so someone used the word fence uh, in, in Radio International Slovenia, which I thought was an interesting development. It even gave you the cost per meter, uh, which I also found a fascinating detail. Um, I should add, however, one last word for my friends in Croatia. Um, they would have liked if you had gotten a few less meters uh, of, uh, of, of, of fencing material. As for me, what I want to say uh, is give you some idea of what it is that I'm coming from and how I've translated that a bit into uh, uh, this project online that was never really supposed to become a project. Um, and uh, has sort of become one in, in the meantime. Um, does anyone here study philosophy? Some of you perhaps. Yeah. Uh, I, I myself, I mean, come somewhat from the direction of philosophy, which uh, as I'm sure all of you know, uh, its origins uh, being the love of knowledge or the love of, of wisdom. Um, as for me, I come a little bit more Less from philosophy and more from theory, uh, which as many of you know is the, the love of theory. Um, but I come more specifically from critical theory, uh, the love of using highly enigmatic Walter Benjamin quotations <laughs> to make a highly obvious point. Uh, so uh, I thought about uh, ways in which I, which I could translate that into um, uh, sharing a little something about what it is that I do. I thought about thinking about why I'm so wise, why I'm so clever, or now why I write such good books. Uh, but instead, I thought I'd talk a little bit about uh, the process that I've been dealing with and kind of going from theory to, to, to praxis in terms of what it is that I'm, that I'm doing now. Uh, obviously, I come from the area of German, German studies, uh, which is what got me interested in the Frankfurt School to begin with, with Adorno, uh, who that avatar is modeled after. Um, so I've spent a lot of time in that country. Sometimes it's a little discouraging 
Uh, when you wake up in the morning at the breakfast table, you see a headline like this. Uh, uh, viele Deutsche denken schlecht über Amerika. So many, many Germans think poorly of America. Uh, the interesting thing is you learn pretty quickly uh, what a large difference simply uh, a teaspoon can make in correcting uh, this view of the world. Uh, <laughs> I don't blame Germans for not having the most positive view of the country that I'm from. I, I certainly don't uh, much of the time. Uh, and I know that Germans also have it difficult in the United States sometimes, uh, this in Chicago. Uh, where I'm from, Wisconsin, was uh, a place where many German immigrants uh, ended up in the 19th century, and they've left their mark uh, on that place. Uh, uh, here's the uh, house where I grew up. Um, <laughs> but I've tried a little bit to incorporate some some of that uh, in terms of, of, of what it is that I do today, I uh, moved to New York, I've taken a little bit of it with me and tried there as, as best I can um, uh, for a German Culture Institute to spread the word about why you might be interested in reading uh, German books. Uh, there are various misconceptions about uh, why uh, uh, you would ever want to spend time uh, with various of these authors. Um, but I have to say, dabbling with marketing is not the easiest thing. Uh, I did it a little bit poorly at the beginning. Uh, this was considered off-message, uh, very off-brand. Uh, but there's some difficult tasks when you have to say something nice about Swiss German uh, or about Austrian. Um, and, of course, the difficult thing always... <laughs> But it's difficult with marketing. You, you're limited as an artist. And so uh, I had a much better idea uh, that was not considered acceptable. <laughs> but I have to say that the, the, it's really not that funny. <laughs> this, is, this is serious. This is serious, serious writing. Uh, as is the worst pun that I ever wrote, which uh, has now been uh, turned into something of a monument. <laughs> in New York, but also embarrassing for me because here as well I had a uh, better idea. Um, so what I've been dealing with recently is uh, traveling uh, a fair amount for many different reasons. I'm trying to write uh, a lot about the places where I'm, where I'm, where I'm going. Um, it's been a rather uh, a low budget uh, affair so far. Uh, recently, however, uh, produce something of a book, and it uh, comes with various problems. I am happy for the new transportation uh, I was given, and grateful to many people who have made that project possible. Of course, uh, you need to thank your parents, uh, God, a uh, good therapist, always a good therapist, a good American always thanks his, his therapist, uh, and of course, uh, my fans who have been so generous in supporting uh, this project uh, all along. Uh, of course, one of the many dangers of uh, a nihilist fan base. Um, it does, however, make some, some good things possible uh, upon occasion. Um, uh, I've called the project from the beginning uh, uh, something along the lines of utopian negation, which I define uh, somewhat like this at times. You see some, some uh, uh, typical motifs there, uh, some typical tensions uh, that I try to explore. Um, it's a little abstract. You might want a visual explanation. Um, could be somewhat more helpful. Uh, I think the allegory is probably clear. Um, but for me, uh, in terms of translating this into, into print, in terms of old media, I've had to ask a lot about this is what the German edition ends up looking like. Uh, they've made it look a lot like poetry, which uh, I'm not entirely comfortable with, but um, uh, that was the approach taken there in the United States. Uh, US edition looks a little bit more uh, uh, like, like this. Um, interesting, though, of course, is that this is not just not just one, one book, but uh, many. That means I find myself now as part of uh, a culture industry that I had uh, studied for many years and, and written about, and I find myself operating within it now, uh, which is not the easiest thing. Um, but I have been happy to work with, with good people. The presses have been, have been very helpful. I think they've made some good suggestions uh, about how I could perhaps speak to a, a somewhat wider <laughs> audience or they, they, they know I have a lot of debts and need to make some money. They suggested actually more of a self-help book. Uh, but of course, they, they also said, do not forget the American uh, uh, market. Um, 
But I've tried throughout uh, to, to remember uh, uh, the spirit of, of the thinker behind what it is that I'm doing. Uh, this, of course, being Adorno. Many of you perhaps have read Adorno. If you haven't, uh, you know much of the terminology that comes from his critique of culture. Of course, culture industry being one of the best known. Um, and one could go through a, a, a long uh, analysis of that, but I think more interesting is in fact just one very famous little exchange uh, that I happened upon. Uh, at one point, I didn't know in, a, in an interview uh, with Adorno, Herr Professor, vor zwei Wochen erschien die Welt noch in Ordnung. So uh, roughly translated, up until two weeks ago, everything seemed like it was in order, right? Everything was as it should be. Uh, his answer uh, says both uh, uh, too little and uh, exactly uh, enough. Uh, mir nicht, uh, not, not, not to me. Uh, an important moment for me because Adorno had never made me laugh before uh, and actually uh, made me think a little bit more about uh, ways in which I could engage with thought that was a little bit closer to what it is that I wanted to do and it's a little closer to, to me. Uh, so I tried uh, the best I can to translate this into social media, um, but uh, in doing so, try to be respectful uh, to uh, ideas. And, in that, and for that reason, I was also happy then when the merchandising department came from the publisher, uh, had some ideas, and I was happy that they were uh, respectful uh, in their uh, 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 projects and plans about what one might do, and I was very happy to see that they avoided a uh, 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 simple kitsch or that they were interested in simply selling a brand to the highest bidder. Showed a fair amount of respect for the German cultural tradition as a whole. Um, as some of you know, Kaspar David Friedrich makes various appearances uh, over the years and what it is that I do. Uh, it leads to certain uh, unsettling tendencies. Every now and then one receives photos like, like this from the museum. Uh, I thought this might uh, go away a little bit. Um, I'm afraid with the book, it's only gotten a little bit worse. Uh, you can feel bad about that. I often do. Um, but then I realize that the internet is always willing to go at least one step farther than I am. Um, what Adorno would think about that, I, 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 I think we all kind of know. The internet certainly knows. Um, luckily, uh, uh, despite all of those abominations, um, what I do has at least found uh, a fan here or there. Uh, primarily in uh, Slovenia. Um, what is it that I, that I do? Um, I've tried to, to th avoid theorizing this uh, as much as possible, but I've given some thought at least to, to uh, breaking this, this down a bit. Um, I'm obviously working a little bit in the realm of comedy, uh, which as you know, a classic definition, uh, tragedy plus time. Um, not my own definition, I think a brilliant one, of course. Uh, I've tried to think that a little bit farther in terms of Twitter comedy, uh, tragedy plus time minus time. Uh, I work in a subgenre uh, of German Twitter comedy, uh, tragedy plus time minus time minus comedy, uh, plus fart jokes, uh, plus Hegel, uh, minus Hegel. Um, so that's the theory. Uh, what does it translate into? Um, I'll, I'll uh, wrap up, but I want to give you some examples. Uh, I remember a bit about where it is that I came from, so I speak about the beauty of the German language uh, still today. Uh, I try to speak to the flexibility of German. I try to counter some of the, some of the misunderstandings about German and its long words. Uh, some Americans at least seem to think that German is, is particularly difficult uh, or uh, particularly challenging. Uh, I try to make it clear that German is really not so hard to learn uh, and that in fact if you do decide to learn, uh, there are some helpful hints uh, as well. Um, and of course, uh, uh, important is still philosophy, still plays a role very much in what it is that uh, I've tried to do. It's not all stupid puns, however, uh, it's also uh, stupid jokes like, like this one. Um, but certainly try as well to think about other philosophers as well and their work. Uh, don't forget the French tradition. Uh, of course, uh, American, American intellectuals uh, as well. Um, but largely a project of kind of demystifying uh, philosophy to some extent. Um, I don't think that what I've been trying to do online has to do with popularizing anything um, as much as trying to, uh, in fact, uh, 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 restore some sort of um, irreverent uh, uh, potential 
to one's approach to uh, thinkers, who in some ways uh, I find are not approached as critically as they, as they might be. Um, so that's something that I've, that I've tried to do and encourage people to discover the work um, of thinkers that people might be scared away from uh, for some reason or another and make it clear that uh, you can, in fact, uh, approach them. Um, uh, and I wasn't exactly sure because certainly one of the thinkers that I uh, uh, owe a great debt to um, uh, could not uh, be here today. And so I had to decide uh, which uh, version of the presentation I would go with. Um, uh, and, and I thought about it for long and hard, uh, but I think I, I owe it uh, to Slavoj Žižek um, to uh, uh, pay some respects in terms of the important role that he's played uh, in my own, my own work. Um, I've tried to make it clear uh, how important uh, he is in, in uh, uh, any number of different uh, cultural contexts, um, uh, particularly uh, particularly in, in, in Germany, um, but also in general in the sense of... <laughs> yeah, I laughed about that for a while. I, uh, I, I like that you bought Zizek. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was a nice, a nice thing. Uh, but he plays uh, frequent appearances in what it is uh, that, I, that I do, a lot of things, just sort of silly little, little jokes, uh, oftentimes trying to think a bit about uh, the state of, 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 of theory now, um, often uh, have found myself uh, in a position of also uh, defending his work. Um, there was a, a recent scandal that uh, I didn't find to be a scandal at all, but uh, others uh, made out to be uh, a bit of a, uh, of a scandal. Uh, but for me, the interesting thing also has been that of ways in which you can think about uh, 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 the, the tradition of jokes within philosophy, which I've tried in some way to, to adopt uh, myself uh, the, best, the best that I can, um, usually without uh, much success, but they continue to make their way into, uh, into work in one form or another. Um, throughout, and certainly, certainly you can't uh, neglect uh, uh, the ways in which, in which uh, 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 he has made his, his mark on contemporary philosophical thought in any number of ways, uh, and, and also, uh, I, I have to say, has, has done a great deal for my own thinking uh, about this, and certainly there is no competition uh, uh, be, be between us in terms of, of, of book sales. Um, but I would be kidding remiss if I didn't conclude at least with uh, a word about what social media uh, can or cannot do um, in terms of, of intellectual engagement. Um, it's not all fun and games. Uh, some things are, of course, important. Uh, there is no philosophy without concepts and uh, uh, without, without rigor. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we have to be uh, honest about what, what Twitter is and what it's for. Uh, it's for stuff like, 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 like this. And I know that, I know that some of you... <laughs> Some of you are still not uh, on uh, social media or on Twitter, um, and I think it's also important to keep in mind uh, uh, what it has to offer, uh, what kind of creative uh, potential uh, it makes available, kind of the shared human experience of being online. And I'll conclude uh, by saying, certainly if you think about social media, and we can talk about this in our discussion, uh, it's important to remember the uh, uh, meaning of, of Twitter within its uh, historical uh, context. Uh, so with that, I will thank you for your attention and look forward to our conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. We're now fake. It's a radio interview. Uh, we are in the radio studio and we'll have uh, incoming calls from the callers. You can ask questions as well, same as me. Please use the hashtag 9manifesto and I will either read your tweets, your questions, or you will be able to ask them by yourself. We have a microphone. Just raise your hand uh, in the, at whatever point. So, Eric Jorosinski, thank you very much. Um, we need uh, the display also for the tweets. Uh,
Somewhere in your bio, I also read that you were a journalist, uh, and I wonder what, how, how serious was that business? In I would say that when a journalist is after the truth, when it fails, becomes an editor. When it doesn't, it goes to philosophy. So, <laughs> how serious a journalist were you, or a reporter? Uh, well, I studied it. I studied journalism and 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 German. Um, uh, and I enjoyed it a great deal. It was the thing that I spent the most time on in my education, actually. Uh, German was a hobby. Uh, I thought I'd become a journalist. Um, there were a few warning signs I might not be the best at it. Uh, the main one was uh, our student newspaper, uh, back a time before maybe some of you were born. <laughs> but uh, we missed the fall of the Berlin Wall. I think we were the only newspaper, <laughs> I think we were the only newspaper in the world uh, that missed that story. Uh, so it's kind of inevitable that I uh, uh, would do what I'm doing today. But I have to say, I, I, was inter I did primarily local politics. And um, I did the kind of work that people, I guess, are concerned about uh, losing in terms of print media today, at least. Because not glamorous work at all, really time intensive, kind of going to the city hall and going through real estate records, you know, going through really boring, uh, uh, tedious stuff in order to write a story about, for instance, uh, property relations uh, uh, within a community that are really significant. So uh, I'm grateful that I've had that experience, but it was also clear to me after uh, a few years of, of, of doing that that uh, I, I wanted to essentially to learn more uh, about theory and graduate school was the only way to do it. Mm -hmm. And how, how come you got so excited about the German language? As as we've seen, that's not very common. <laughs> was it was it the German first or the Frankfurt School first? Uh, it was none of that stuff at all. Uh, it was actually just coincidence. Um, uh, I'm from a tiny little town uh, uh, in the middle of nowhere, and uh, someone from my high school spent a year studying in, in Germany and came back and uh, talked about the the uh, great big world outside of this 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 little shithole <laughs> where I was growing up, and. Uh, and for me, that just became uh, the first place to think about getting to know. Um, but it was not because of any affinity to German stuff. If anything, I actually had a distaste for it a bit because growing up where I did, uh, German was very much sort of the kitsch culture of where I grew up because these were sort of uh, third, fourth generation immigrants who had a nostalgic connection to where they were from, but uh, no connection to the living culture. And uh, as I think the one family in my little town without a German last name, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a culture I never really felt like I belonged to. I understand. I saw that when you came to Zagreb, you shared your location. Uh, do you often do that? Because we hear a lot from Americans that uh, Germans, for once, and uh, Europeans are very over... Uh, we, we, share, we, we don't share the same... Uh, the same feelings about sharing location, about uh, the privacy, mm -hmm. that we are over-exaggerating about uh, the privacy, at least Jeff Jarvis says so. Mm -hmm. And there's one thing in Germany that few people in the United States understand, that's uh, for Pixelungsrecht, where people have started to take down the faces of the, the building. So what's your position towards that? I mean, you're mm -hmm. obviously quite okay with Sharing your location well, you know, it's funny. I'm actually not. Uh, that I think what you're referring to is the one thing oh, yes. about. That's the only that time Airbnb? I've ever done that. Uh, yeah, it's the only time I've ever done that for the sake of a joke. Uh, <laughs> uh, but but I also thought, well, this is actually a big building with many apartments in it. Uh, I'm not I'm not so concerned. Uh, but it was uh, no. That's actually something that matters to me a lot. Uh, it's one of the things I've maybe have written the most about. Uh, in Germany, at least, over the last year. Um, certainly, the, the work that I do uh, for a weekly newspaper there has is always connected to uh, events and to the news. Um, and that has been one of the biggest issues, certainly, uh, between the United States and Europe, Germany in particular. Um, and also, a lot of the people I've gotten to know there over the last year or two are uh, essentially, many of them privacy uh, activists, if that's the right term. Um, uh, Berlin has become a real center for that. Uh, it's interesting to see the coalitions that are being built internationally between people who are interested in those issues and care about them. Um, a lot of that is happening right now, uh, which I think is a very good thing. Um, no, for me, actually, uh, I have to say, uh, I was working on a book, the academic book I didn't finish, uh, which is why I ended up doing what I do now, um, uh, uh, was about transparency uh, as a metaphor for democracy. I was essentially trying to read that 
the aesthetic of, of building government uh, uh, buildings with a lot of glass. Uh, I was trying to read that critically in a lot of ways. Um, and uh, I'm disappointed I never finished that book, but I'm actually happy I did not finish it before the Snowden revelations because I essentially was one of those, those people who uh, uh, was shocked at how naive I was uh, when, when that came out. Mm -hmm. And that's had quite an impact on me and something I care a great deal about. Mm -hmm. You're saying that the book you haven't finished. Is this is also the reason why you turned to Twitter, right? Because you couldn't write long sentences. Uh, it was too. <laughs> Well, I could I could write them, but they were they they were miserable. Uh, they are actually extremely long. My friends made fun of how terribly long they were, uh, and and what they were mainly what mainly made them long were not that they were filled with any good ideas. They were all filled with uh, words like maybe and perhaps and not unlike, and uh, it was all qualifiers because I was so nervous about making any point in, 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 in a way that actually uh, said something. And I was frustrated with the language uh, of, of academic writing, and I never really found a way to do it otherwise. So for me, Twitter was sort of the escape from that. And, and can you use jokes in academic writing? Uh, yeah, in a, way, did you? in a way you can. Uh, I probably would have enjoyed it more if I had. Um, the things that I did finish writing, which are a matter of sort of essays, articles, I think the only reason I got them done were that, was that there were one or two places where I kind of liked a turn of phrase or something. Or there was something in it that, that I felt like uh, got out of the standard way of doing the writing. Um, but it's, uh, 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 that for me has, uh, was one of the big challenges. But um, all the jokes aside, I mean, Slavoj Žižek, I think one of his, one of his uh, main contributions, why he's really mattered to me, is that he's brought different types of discourse into that kind of thinking that I think is uh, uh, a contribution that is, that is really significant. And um, it's people like him that actually gave me the sense that um, it doesn't have to be the way it is, necessarily. You mentioned Slavoj Žižek, he's on Twitter or not, at least he hasn't got his uh, Twitter account verified. How did you got your Twitter account verified? Um, uh, well, let's see, it's, I guess the short answer is um, the president of Estonia um, called in a favor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how absurd my life has become over the last couple of years. Uh, I, I didn't used to know presidents of Estonia. And, um, well, it was funny because I didn't know it was the president. So he was a follower for a long time. I just thought, who is this guy who keeps sending me these bad jokes? <laughs> um, and then I, and then I saw, so, uh, went to the website. Uh, there was just a little link. It doesn't say President of Estonia's biography or something. And I, and I discovered this. Um, but actually, it was a little campaign I had online mm -hmm. just for a, a couple of, a couple of uh, uh, days or weeks or something. Uh, but that's how that happened in the end. But it's interesting. The first thing that happens if you do get a verified account is you'll receive an email from Twitter saying, Congratulations, your account is now verified. Um, it is now much more likely to be hacked. <laughs> that, is a, that is the first email that you get. So um, that was not the most uh, 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 reassuring. You use the word nine quite a lot. We have a mayor in Ljubljana who ends every sentence with the word nine. Uh, I think you should, guys should meet because <laughs> Slovenians really do use a lot of nine words. Uh, well, uh, I, I, I can only encourage it, I suppose. Um, I, I prefer to start my sentences with nine instead of, of, of ending them that way. But, uh, well, it's interesting. The, the, the thing about the, that, that name um, was also kind of coincidence. Uh, I originally uh, come with something very different. I wanted uh, a name. I, I wanted to, to structure the thing around um, not a personality of sort of, I'm going to be a, some sort of Twitter Adorno or something and say what Adorno would say. I'm not interested in that. Um, the idea was the name of a publication so that you could talk about whatever you wanted to talk about. I mean, you're not limited, you know, in, 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 in what you're doing, um, but it expresses more sort of a particular spirit of what you're doing. And, but you could talk about any number of things. Uh, but it was still important to me to have this face, you know, this avatar, um, because I think that a lot of things depend upon seeing seeing that face next to the text. Well, you're nine quarterly and our mayor is nine daily. I mean, he uses <laughs> nine in every sentence, so sentencely, I don't know. I'm not that good in English. Uh, <laughs> but have you ever considered ghostwriting for, for any brand? I saw a tweet that I liked a lot uh, about Uber, when in doubt, umlaut. Yeah. I thought that could be a slogan for Uber, but 
unfortunately, they don't use the umlaut. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, I've made jokes about that, uh, that it's, uh, uh, an Amer they're, they're too, I forget what it was, some of they're too cheap for the umlaut. I forget what exactly the, the, the how, how it went. But um, obviously, I mean, a lot of what I'm doing is, uh, is just trying to uh, reuse marketing language that we all know and rhythms of marketing. Um, and the question is just what else can you do with, with, those, with those formulations? Um, I mean, the classic tradition of the aphorism uh, uh, all these texts depend on attention, depend on, on, on various contradictions, uh, form and content uh, in some form or another, working together but also against each other. And often for me that marketing language is about a form that we recognize and that has become in fact very much embedded uh, in, in that you start, you start the sentence, of course you can end it usually, uh, but then making interesting substitutions. Mm -hmm. um, so for me a lot of it has been in fact kind of learning a bit uh, about marketing, it's not work I'm interested in doing, except um, I would say there have been times when there's something going on, a protest, some, some, something political that I uh, uh, want to support somehow, and I've kind of seen my job that morning, like, can I write a slogan for that? Uh, and I've seen that that's kind of what I was trying to do, and uh, I don't necessarily consider that great art, but I, I like that challenge mm -hmm. of essentially what can you do with a way of writing that you've learned um, that is something different than you know, marketing for Uber? Uh -huh. so. We were wondering whether the audience is more interested in philosophy or Twitter, so you can start <laughs> asking questions right away, so we'll get you some answers. Uh, but in terms to understand what you do on Twitter, sometimes it's also, also good to know who do you follow and what, what kind of communications do you have with mm -hmm. your followers. Obviously, they helped you a lot in Zagreb. Yeah. Have you got any positive or useful feedback from Ljubljana? Yet. Uh, um, well, I just got I just got here, um, but actually, yes, um, a number of people were in touch uh, with suggestions uh, about um, uh, people I should meet, things I should do. Um, that, to me, has been the most interesting part of this, uh, because in my um, my time as an academic. Uh, I uh, was extremely depressed and really withdrawn. I mean, I essentially cut myself off from any number of people. Um, I mean, it's almost insane for me to think about it now, but I remember, you know, I'd see my phone, my phone would ring, which is already odd, you know, someone calls you in the United States these days, perhaps here as well, uh, instead of a text. And I see that some old friend, I was actually almost angry, so, doesn't he know how busy I am? You know, I, and it, was, it was insane. Uh, but that's how kind of cut off I was from so many things, um, because uh, 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 I was I was so focused on on succeeding at at, at this job, and it meant uh, a lot to me. I thought, um, but uh, the thing that that really I think made 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 Twitter of interest to me was one. Uh, I enjoyed the writing, uh, and if you go from kind of years of looking at a blank screen to sort of being able to 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 write a, a tweet quickly, and you can always write a tweet. It's just a question of how good is it. You know, it's not a question of length. It's just sort of how how good can I make these 140 characters? Um, but for me, uh, the thing that really made it of interest was connecting to lots of other people. But I would say right now, I also use Twitter somewhat differently than I used to. Um, and that's also something I sort of miss, but with a larger following, I've also had more distance from Twitter itself. I used to know in the first year uh, or more uh, a number of people much better uh, over Twitter. Now I don't as much. And what I read a lot of now is primarily news stuff and so on. And, and I read things that people send to me uh, a lot. But um, otherwise, for me, I'm, I'm using it almost more as, as, as a news tool uh, for what it is that I want to write about more than anything else. I understand. And what do you do? If a tweet is not good, do you delete it? Do you do that at all? Uh, usually I write it and then I delete it. Uh, and that's always been that way. And um, that's something I like about Twitter is uh, if I were to think about it for too long, which was essentially the case in sort of academic writing, I would never write anything. Um, and so I kind of forget that anyone, I try very hard to forget anyone is reading it, send out what I want to send, and decide usually at the end of the day or, or before then, um, is this something I want to keep or, or not keep? Um, so yeah. Okay, so if, it's, if, it tweet, if a tweet is not very good, it's deleted. If it's very good, you get a lot of feedback. So what do your followers do with the tweets? Do they, do they compliment the idea? Do they... It depends a lot, um, and, and it's also an interesting question too about sort of um, if there's a lot of feedback, does that mean it's good or not? Um, and I would say that that's um, something that's a real issue is sort of deciding, am I writing towards for the reaction or am I writing for something, something else? 
And um, I would say the tweet that, uh, tweets that get a lot of reaction are a particular type of writing. I mean, it's a particular kind of one-liner sort of joke with a very explosive sort of uh, 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 response. Whereas something else that's written, written with a very different rhythm, uh, you could say is much harder to write and much more complex, uh, but it's never going to have that kind of reaction. It uh, doesn't mean that no one read it or they didn't like it, but it will just not uh, evince that. Yes, um, but I would say that in general what people do, um, uh, some people have drawn cartoons, which has been very, very cool. I like that a in lot. In Germany? Uh, what's that? In Germany? Uh, yeah, other places as well. Um, and that's something that I, that I find really interesting. Also not sure I always like it because often I think that um, these little texts depend on um, you creating your own image for the text that's there. So often I think it's better without an image. Um, but uh, yeah, people do, do various things. But I would say uh, what makes me laugh uh, is when someone replies with a better joke, you know, than than than, than whatever thing I sent out, um, or they or they uh, contribute something like, "Oh, you're interested in that? You should read this thing," or something like that. Um, so so there is back and forth in that way. But it's it's at a much less personal level for me now than it used to be. I was referring to a, a German illustrator who takes a tweet. Draw, draws it and takes a fragment of the tweet and draws it mm -hmm. to, to whoever wrote it. Uh, I, so nowadays, uh, what kind of reaction can you have on Twitter? You can either reply, you can retweet, or this is latest, you can love the tweet, which <laughs> I saw your reply was quite illustrative and uh, straightforward. Nine. <laughs> Do you well, guys in the, like in the, the shape of the, a heart? Yeah. Uh, but. Um, I don't know. I mean, there, there are different reactions, though, because the other thing, and what's probably meant the most to me, is that um, every now and then, you know, someone sends me an email and they say, like, I've decided to, uh, uh, I've been learning German for the last month, you know, I don't know if I would have done it, you know, otherwise, or I'm studying, you know, somewhere uh, uh, in Europe, I don't know if I would have done it otherwise, or I've seen the name Roland Barthes, you know, many times, I thought I'd try to read this. Um, that's been really uh, the most gratifying is that that kind of exchange because I personally um, I don't see Twitter as being that good for uh, interaction. Um, it's uh, uh, for me most of the interaction that I have uh, on Twitter is behind the scenes, uh, private sort of direct message exchange uh, with people uh, uh, for various reasons. But uh, one of them is just. Uh, that in particular, any kind of argument or something I found is much more productive there than it is publicly. Um, but it, of course, depends on what you're talking about. But, but I'm, I'm quite sure that some Americans are starting to learn uh, German because of your tweets. Have you ever taught German? Not just... Taught it? it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah um, uh, a great deal, often. Uh, and in fact, that's... Um, uh, what, I'm not necessarily talented with languages either, and I've done it for a long time, uh, but that was another thing that in the past um, was always made me feel a bit uncertain. You're a professor of a language you're not a native speaker of. You know you're never going to, to do it quite as well as you want to. Um, and uh, also kind of added to a bit of anxiety. Now I, I see it as something that helps me because as, as anyone knows, working with uh, a language that's, that's not your own, you see it differently than a native speaker does. And often you see things in it that a native speaker considers essentially natural and you're still seeing the construction you know, of the system of that language. And that's something that uh, has helped me in working with German a lot. But actually when, I, when you start having puns in a foreign language, then I guess you can say that you dominate it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you want to. Uh, I'm not sure, but I but I think that's the moment that I enjoyed. That I first enjoyed anything about German was was making making some sort of pun actually, uh, and and went on to to torture friends of mine with that for many years <laughs> after the fact. Because you also sometimes think things are funny uh, that a native speaker does not at all. Uh, that's the danger uh, as well. Can you tell me a little bit what what kind of a professor were you? Uh, nervous, uh, <laughs> uh, old fashioned. I didn't use, uh, I mean, it's because uh, I've spoken a bit in the last months at some American universities, and there are a lot of American professors sort of under pressure and in the UK, be using social media, doing sort of outreach. This, this word impact is used a lot. Um, that makes me a bit nervous. I feel like they already have a lot to do. Um, something else is going to uh, uh, lose out, you know, if you're, if you're spending that, that time doing it. Um, I uh, pr primarily taught close reading, kind of no matter what I was doing. Uh, I usually had a slide with a paragraph, maybe just a sentence, and uh, worked with that for an hour. 
And what I was interested in doing was uh, a process of thinking together in some way of argument, counter argument, um, uh, and especially that's really where uh, my love for uh, the short form for aphorisms comes from, is from teaching, because I found that that's where I could get the most out of a, out of a text in, in, in conversation uh, and discussion about it. Um, and the short form in particular, especially good aphorisms, I mean, a lot of what I'm writing just kind of surface level joke things. But, you know, the, you are never sure, uh, even the shortest say of Nietzsche's aphorisms, how long do you read it? How many times do you read it? When are you done reading it? And that to me is one of the interesting questions about it, um, that you have to kind of des decide how much value you're going to place on that text in, in thinking about what it is you can get out of that. So to me, that's one of the, the interesting elements of it. I guess it's also hard to sell aphorisms. I mean, this is, you've got a difficult job. Perhaps you, if you marketed yourself as a stand-up comedian, people would be paying 25 euros instead of five. Well, <laughs> uh, you had to pay five euros. Um, usually people don't, don't, don't pay anything. I shouldn't tell you that. Uh, but, the, um, but that's a different thing, though, is the other thing. Though. It's a completely different um, art. I mean, the, the, the way in which... What I just uh, kind of talked now about uh, and, and just did was sort of the question of how could you work with Twitter somehow uh, live? And um, there is a thing, maybe it's been done here before as well. You know, in Germany, I had things called Twitterlesungen, like Twitter readings. I think people do, in fact, read the tweets. I, I never want to read those things. Uh, I think they're, all, they're, they're written really to be read. Uh, individuals to read to themselves uh, because the voice that you are going to have in your head reading these things is so much better than anything I could ever do. Um, for me, it's more about creating the rhythm that you'll read, but uh, I don't want my voice to be attached to it. Um, so that uh, for me, um, the, what I was interested in and, and still am uh, primarily is, is, is the writing and um, is in kind of developing a perspective for how can I talk about things that are happening right now kind of from the perspective that I developed in this little Twitter world. I mean, um, I did my best, I mean, when I, uh, kind of the, the, the couple of things from the news at the beginning of this are sort of examples of what I try to do every day. And it's very hard to do, I mean, still learning, you know, uh, how, to, how to approach it. But I think that's the, the, the greatest challenge and most interesting one now is sort of, okay, you've developed kind of a style, you've developed uh, a perspective, you've developed a voice uh, within one particular context online. What can that voice talk about? And, and what are the limits of it? What can it do well? What can it not do so well? And, and, and your, uh, your uh, tweets have been changing during time. At the, some point you introduced uh, like dialogues because they work better. Mm -hmm. Well, different things. I, mean, I would say the main difference, though, is that um, uh, you know you could do uh, Kant puns, you know, all day if you wanted to, um, and uh, and and there's something to that. But for me, uh, I found Twitter got a bit insular. I mean, I was interested in in moving outside of Twitter, uh, talk about a world beyond it, uh, and for various reasons. Uh, but one of them is simply that you have new material every day, and that's that's a real plus. Um, because uh, obviously, if you're if you're writing a lot all the time, uh, you're looking for things to write about, and certainly uh, following stuff in the news, politics in particular, is very helpful for that. I would like to turn to your questions, um, but I have difficulties asking them because I can't see. But you get the microphone. Is there a mic? Yes. Well, please do because we're recording also. So there's a question, and I'll have one from the audience as well. Just raise your head, heads, um, hands. So <laughs> Heads up, One, yes. two, three. Is it working? Yeah, okay. So uh, I actually have two questions, um, and both of them concern a certain tension, I would hope. Uh, the first one is you were almost never, if not never, uh, positioned as an artist, at least in media, or you don't position yourself as that. Yet in this conversation, you constantly refer to um, what you're doing as a form of art. Now, as an Adorno man, my question is, what is your relationship to whatever it is that you're doing in terms of it being art or not? Mm -hmm. And the second thing that interests me is when you talked about Nietzsche's aphorism, you brought up the point that you don't really know how many times you're supposed to read them when you're actually done. Mm -hmm. But on Twitter, you're done in about 30 seconds, then mm -hmm. it's lost. How has that influenced the way you write or even think about these short sentences, thoughts? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Both good questions. I mean, I'll answer the second one first. It's that uh, I just recognize the limitations in a way of Twitter. Um, 
I, uh, I think that uh, my interest comes from c sort of a classical aphorism uh, background, but um, obviously it takes a certain form and heads much more in the direction of joke for Twitter. Um, and, and a lot of what I've done there has been kind of learning how to write for that particular medium um, and sometimes writing against it as well. Um, but I would say that for me, um, I simply would say that, yes, you're right. I think that's how people read Twitter. The only context you have for Twitter is the medium itself. Um, and there is a, a certain way of, of, of reading that, engaging with it. Typically, I would say it's a matter of when it comes to response, uh, it's recognition is the sense, and it's a very fast recognition, uh, and and it's um, it's it's very kind of visceral as well. Especially this this notion of sort of retweeting something our favorite. It's like you reach out and you grab it really quickly, and it's like and you're going to take it and put it in your thing as well. You're going to identify with it so strongly, you in fact are going to identify yourself, you know, quite literally with that. Um, so I would say uh, that's a limit. Clearly, uh, I guess I've seen it as. Uh, using a form that can circulate, uh, which means adopting more of a joke form, adopting a form that, that somehow works on Twitter, um, as, as being sort of, uh, this has to be a bottle shaped like all the other bottles so that it can get into the circulation. Uh, but is there some sort of uh, uh, interesting thing you can do with the, whatever message you can fit into that thing? Um, so I see this very limited potential in terms of the actual kind of thought process, you know, that, that can be somehow put in motion. Um, but I do think uh, more than anything, it can perhaps trigger an interest or speak to um, uh, a reminder even of an interest. I would say most people who follow what I do are not uh, academics. They're people who have studied and gone on to do other jobs, but um, they're still interested. But they don't have necessarily. Uh, they're not. They're not keeping up with 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 academic journals or something like this. And it's just a reminder, I think, more than anything else. So I guess I would say, I see a real limitation there, and I don't. I don't try to make too much out of the the, the potential for that. Um, and just for instance, the writing for print is for me also a very different type of writing. I mean, that's written with a, a little different rhythm in mind. Um, that's never this sort of like a. Bam! Kind of, kind of, kind of response. It's much more of a. The, the best I can hope for is a, ah, uh, interesting, you know, or or that's that's an interesting perspective, or that's well crafted, and in, and that's to answer your first question. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I actually have never really referred to what I'm doing as art in any serious way. I mean, I think of myself as a, as much more as a craft of some sort, and this is avoiding any Adornian terminology. It's simply the way I think about it is that um, uh, I am. Um, see this as, uh, uh, in a way, uh, I'm thinking a lot about form and I'm thinking a lot about composition. I guess I'm thinking a lot about things that, um, that, that uh, say, a poet might think about, a language that, that, that someone might use as doing that stuff. Um, but for me, I also appreciate the fact that your timing has to be just as precise, probably more precise in telling a joke, you know? And that's kind of the... the uh, 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 sort of, um, I want to take the aesthetic aspect of that seriously, I guess. Maybe that's, maybe that's the way of putting it. But I would say that, um, for me, I think of it much more as, as, as a type of craft uh, that I have been learning, will hopefully continue to learn, uh, that uh, pretty new doing this. I mean, uh, but what, it, what, what appeals to me is the thought that uh, it has a, a potential because you know what people have been able to accomplish, you know, with the aphorism form. Um, and certainly I'm not where I would like to, to be with that, but it's, it's something that uh, is a type of writing, a type of aphorism for a particular medium, but it's certainly not the only way to do it. There, there are some more questions with a hashtag. Do you do private gigs? <laughs> Uh, well, There's someone's boyfriend's <laughs> birthday coming up. <laughs> uh, uh, perhaps. Uh, I've done that. The last time it didn't go very well. I did that, though, uh, in Switzerland. Um, someone's apartment. And the person who was my host, I think, knew nothing about me. Was just said, you need to have this guy. And I, and I spoke. And, and I was done. And he was sort of the moderator. He just said, yes, those jokes, they were... They were not, they were not good. <laughs> <laughs> and and then the second question was, uh, so you are working with philosophy. How does it feel to take something like that and to cheapen it this way? <laughs> 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 
And then the last question was, uh, then I go, yes, uh, I looked at some of your book. Um, it is very American. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so uh, but it was actually really fun because the context was so very different than anything I'd done before. Um, so I guess I've done that, but I'm new to it. Uh, so yeah. Do, do you think if we translate Nine Manifesto to Slovenian, will it be lost in translation? Uh, not necessarily, and uh, we can talk about culture industry right here because I knew that there were there was going to be a translation, and so there were things that I did not use because I knew that they would be very hard to translate. Um, some of the stuff that's in the German one is actually different uh, because the the English wouldn't translate, um, and uh, so I would say it's quite quite possible because a lot of times the language actually isn't. That important. It's much has more to do with the structure, more to do with the composition. Uh, because I've started doing this in Dutch uh, as of January. My Dutch isn't uh, as good as my German. It's actually really just kind of intermediate, uh, and so the language has had to be really simple. Um, but what I'm trying to do is sort of how much can I get out of a very simple language? Uh, but primarily, then it comes about through the composition. I'm looking at my phone. Can you raise your hands if there's any more questions? You see, this is very Slovenian. Uh, yeah. Uh, but you're learning. <laughs> no questions. Uh, actually, I do. I do have a question. You came late. This is not very German. I mean, <laughs> have you adopted I, I, I any was, German habits? Well, I, I was picked up by a Slovenian. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, um, German habits. Um, do you drive uh, Volkswagen diesel? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I don't have a driver's license right now. Uh, it, it just expired as well. But it's uh, the. Um, in some ways, yes, definitely. Uh, I I think that um, what I but what I enjoyed most about getting to know that culture again wasn't necessarily that it was German culture. It was just the uh, opportunity to be in a place that you know a lot about or learning a lot about, but don't entirely belong to, um, and. Uh, that kind of insider outsider position was one that uh, has been really valuable to me and interesting. Um, also, it's just been a matter of, uh, you know, after you spend time in a, in a place for a while, as we know, you stop thinking about it less in terms of the country and, and much more in terms of the people you know or your neighborhood or whatever it happens to be. So I would say that um, for me, it actually gets harder and harder to sort of generalize about, you know, even what German habits would be. But um, certainly, I, I hope that I've taken some things that, that, that I wanted to take anyway. I, I can see the reason why German media appreciates your writing. You have a column uh, here and there. What about the American media? Do they contact you for, like, I would say sometimes for the questions regarding Germany? Has anyone contacted you regarding the Dieselgate? Uh, not about that. Not Other things. Um, I wrote a lot about Greece uh, over the summer. Um, people were interested in that in the American media. Um, there have been other things just more generally about that. There were a number of stories uh, done over the last couple of years about whether or not German was now cool in the United States. And, um, <laughs> And I guess my response is, well, if you're asking me, uh, it's probably not that cool. Uh, but I will. Um, but there's been a marketing potential has been recognized in German, I would say, more than anything else. Um, also, of course, the kind of Berlin hype that has existed for a very long time still exists, of course. Um, those kind of things people have been, have been interested in. But uh, in general, though, it's... Um, the uh, a, a lot of interest really has been more from 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 the German side or European in in, in general. So I see. There's a question. Isn't it weird to translate tweets? Uh, uh, do you all, do you sometimes use the uh, Google Translate for that? I mean, you can translate tweets, but have you ever seen what happens to your tweets or thoughts when you Google Translate them? Oh uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> uh, but I actually use the. The uh, translation feature a lot on tweets um, uh, because obviously it's faulty, but um, it's pretty good at giving me a gist of what someone has written, uh, and that's been helpful. Uh, so yeah. I was uh, wondering, do you use TweetDeck or uh, how do you tweet? You only tweet from your mobile phone, so. Yeah, I tried one of those things a long time ago. You know, where I'm sure those of you who work with social media, you know, there are all these tools for sort of timing when you're going to send out a tweet. Oh, you never schedule a tweet. You can do all that stuff. Uh, I don't like that at all uh, because for me, it's really much more about the idea of uh, working within limitations, and one of those limitations is just that 
okay, they're, they're, uh, I don't know, it, it just felt somehow like uh, the, I was too isolated from the idea of sort of being in front of people and having to come up with something uh, if you were writing it and sending it out at a different time. But the other thing is simply that uh, a lot of tweets, uh, it's not, obviously it's about, it's about how it's written, but it's also about when it's written. And, and that, that timing, I think, is very important in terms of, of whether or not something might resonate. Um, and also, I mean, some of the famous instances of corporate accounts and someone getting into to trouble for tasteless tweets um, are, are a result of these timing things. Like someone makes some sort of joke about some natural catastrophe or something, like an earthquake of savings, right? And, and, then, and then in the intermediate, you know, the day in passage, there's a major earthquake, you know, and then it's, it's the news, oh, taste, this, these, these kind of things also happen. Uh, but for me, I guess it just felt a bit too uh, artificial. Mm -hmm. And um, so, no, I, I haven't done that since. It's always good to know who do you follow. Do you follow God? Do you follow any corporate accounts? Or uh, I follow like 7,000 uh, accounts. Uh, and it's not that I read them all. It's just that they, that, that, that they flip by. You know, things catch my eye. And um, that's how I read Twitter primarily. Apart from, as I said, sort of news things that I go to on a regular basis. Um, but uh, otherwise, it's just what happens to be there by chance often. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so follow a, a lot of a lot of accounts, um, but that's um, in some ways uh, leads to a certain way of, of, of using it, a certain type of reading, I guess. And you obviously haven't met Zizek yet in person. Uh, no, I've seen him speak a couple of times, but uh, but I, I have not. I would uh, say that in terms of people using Twitter, I mean, obviously the. I think there have been in the United States more academics uh, who've been using using it. Um, and I guess the thing that I try to caution them about is I think often there's a sense that they will find a lot of people uh, following or reading quickly, which is not the case. Um, I would say that uh, there was a question uh, I got before about sort of, well, how does it even happen that you end up with uh, any number of followers or, or larger following? And that sort of came about because of a little game I was playing of uh, after about six months. I mean, there was a small circle of people following. These are the people I got to know a bit better. And then I, uh, I, I, I thought about, well, maybe I could write a joke that sort of uh, famous comedians might like, you know, and they'll, they'll, send it, they'll send it on, they'll retweet this thing. And that's kind of what happened. I mean, it's, uh, I did that for uh, some months, and that's the only way that a, a following started. And then I sort of stopped that because I thought, okay, I just want this to, 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 to maintain itself at this point. But um, without somehow connecting uh, to some mechanism of a wider audience, uh, that isn't going to happen. And that's mm -hmm. quite all right if that's not at all what you're interested in doing. But um, it's not simply because uh, uh, you know, someone has more followers because some, they're somehow just better at writing than uh, you, know, you are. You're not good at it, and that's why you don't have many followers. There are so many factors in, in, involved, and context uh, and, mm -hmm. and, and circulation it matters. Well, Slovenians, we don't ask questions, but when we do, we ask them, it's closed questions, ja oder nein. I have two ja oder nein questions from Twitter. So, nein Corley is actually optimistic. Woody Allen of philosophy minus Allen. Uh, I don't know. I hope not. Uh, in some, no, I hope not in some ways. Uh, and I've, I've kind of gone out of my way not to... Uh, that's something I have not wanted to do. It's a reason why I have, and, and sometimes I'm sure it has a bit of that tone, um, but an, another thing why I was interested in new stuff and, and political stuff is that I, I didn't want it to become too self-obsessed. I mean, obviously anything on Twitter is about narcissism and about uh, self-representation and, and, and all of these things, um, but that also is just not very interesting you know, for, for yourself after a while either. And, and to me, the idea of when it's couched in those terms, what I worry about is that uh, 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 it has become too self-preoccupied. Um, and, and, and for me, I've really tried to make an effort uh, for that not, not to happen. Um, but of course, I, I understand that the point that's being is made. Is anyone holding you back? Holding me back from? From tweeting at all times? Uh, in a way, yes. Um, uh, myself, largely. I mean, there were times uh, in the first year or two in which uh, it definitely was too much. Uh, probably never, you know, uh, uh, measure this any 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 precision. 
could have been as many as 10 or 12 hours uh, a day. Uh, and that was a time in which I actually also lost touch with a lot of people, you know, who I normally uh, saw and normally talked to. Um, uh, the relationship I was in at that, at that time fell apart to some extent because of that. Um, I'm sure it was a terrible pain, you know, to be with because my thoughts were always somewhere else. I always wanted to write the next, the next, the next tweet. Um, it, it must have been awful. Uh, uh, and, and for me, that's something I've tried to learn from and tried to really keep, keep, keep myself in check about so that now it's sort of, you know, if I'm, we're having a beer or something, I'm not gonna be the person there with my phone, you know, doing this all the time because uh, I really went way too far, you know, in that direction for a while and uh, it, was, it was pretty destructive in a lot of ways. So, last tweets from you then. Uh, is Nine Corley a bridge between Obama and Putin, knowing that Putin knows German? <laughs> uh, I've made a fair number of Putin jokes, uh, none of them very favorable. Uh, yet. So I, yet. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if that's the case. I, 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 I don't think so. I don't think so. But maybe there's potential. Do we have another questions from the audience or should I read a few more tweets? After their first dive into philosophy and aphorism high, everybody has a Nietzsche story. What's yours? My Nietzsche story? Uh, well, now I am going to sound like Woody Allen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, I, th I think I first read Nietzsche when my, uh, uh, th my therapist said, <laughs> you, you need to go home and read your Nietzsche. He, he, th he prescribed Nietzsche. Uh, so I first read Nietzsche on prescription. Uh, so that was my first Nietzsche experience, um, and and but I would say that I was most interested in Nietzsche once I began to teach uh, Nietzsche. Um, I got uh, much more interested, much more involved, and um, started to think about uh, his work much more deeply than I had before then. Uh, one more question: What would Nine Corley order Slavoj Žižek if they ever met? What Wine. Would, what would he what? Order. Order. Wine, beer. <laughs> or a shoot in the heart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 hmm. uh, I I don't know. I don't. I, I, I'm not. I'm not sure what to say to that. I would accept. Um, uh, be nice to have the chance sometime, and I, I'll ask. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, there's a comment, I guess, from Alesh. You could speak in your Twitter voice. You know. Uh, what is your Twitter voice? I mean, no, I can't, uh, and that was a very conscious thing not to do. And uh, um, uh, that doesn't exist as a voice at all. Uh, that's 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 a form. That's writing, and it's um, to me the voice when I'm trying to write something and actually thinking. I mean, some things you know, it's less about about those considerations of the rhythm and the sound and and whatever composition. Sometimes it's just this you know stupid one-liner pun or something. But when it is kind of about the rhythm, uh, the voice is 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 not saying anything. The voice is the mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm. You know, it's sort of a you know, it's sort of counting time a little bit. Um, it's not a voice though, um, and uh, that's important for me to kind of keep it that way because um, as soon as it, there was a voice, I think it would also be more limiting for me. But obviously, you have a very strong voice when it comes to Twitter. I mean, some, I could imagine someone saying, oh, that's so Nine Corley. Uh, yeah, but, that's, but that is much more a question of composition, of, of style. Um, of, uh, but a, but a, what I've learned about Twitter, at least in terms of what people react to, again, you know, a lot of the things we've talked about is sort of reaction, not reaction to, and, 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 and how you uh, evaluate that. But I would say sort of classical rhetoric is something that really speaks to people on, on Twitter. Um, uh, there, are, there are any number of ways in which sort of, uh, sort of you know, Cicero you know, would do well on Twitter uh, in, in many aspects. I mean, there, there are ways in which um, uh, classical kind of formulations um, do the job with, 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 with an aphorism. Um, and also in Twitter, even though it's being read you know, in that very quick way and with the immediate response or, or, or nothing. Will you be returning to your flat in Zagreb today? Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay, so, so some more time for you to hang out with, uh, with the audience, perhaps, after we have a coffee. And uh, thank you very much, Eric Jarosinski. It was a pleasure talking to you. And we'll follow your tweets and see what happens there. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.